So let's go ahead and go to our Father in prayer, and, um, and we'll begin. So let's pray. Father, we're just so grateful that we can come before you each and every day. Thank you for giving us a beautiful sunny morning. Um, Father, reminding you of the fact that you're looking down on us. And Father, you, we could feel uh, your, your touch. And, uh, and even from so far away, we could feel the heat of the sun. And yet, Father, we know that uh, in spite of the fact that the sun is so far away and so powerful, you are more powerful. And that, Father, you reach and touch each and every one of us. I pray, Father, for the world uh, that is going through so many challenges that we're uh, with the coronavirus and the stress of cabin fever and the stress of worry about whether or not that's going to affect us and, and the, uh, the loved ones, especially those who are 65 and older and uh, the vulnerable part of our society. Uh, Father, I, I pray for the racial tension that is going on in the world that we um, are able to handle some of this stuff. Uh, Father, with, uh, with your grace and with your mercy, we know, Father, nothing is too difficult for you. Father, well, thank you above all for Jesus, uh, who went through an unbelievable, unprecedented uh, pain of enduring things that he did not deserve. Thank you for uh, his example. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we looked at some, the fact that, um, that it's important to, to think the right way and so that we act the right way, so that we feel the right way, and we come back then to acting the right way. In other words, we think the right thoughts and therefore we start acting through the scriptures and then we feel certain things we have the right feelings and then when we have the right feelings about loving and about we now our love for christ for example we talked about this reflect in our obedience to christ and so we act the right way ultimately and it's a good cycle to be in right one and so we we talked about a good sign of mental health is having a strong sense of purpose sort of like you know having uh, good, there's some basics to having good mental, to uh, physical health is to have a good sense of purpose mentally. Second one is to actually feeling really connected to people is, is, um, is uh, an important dy dynamic. Having strong relationships. That, that, that is an important thing and, 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 and not to be in isolation. I think it's really, really important. They've done studies upon studies of this. Uh, literally, people who have um, two babies who were in a room and one who was touched, as opposed to one who was not touched, the one who was touched, and they've done it so, um, that was a lot more secure in the way, just simply by touching, by being connected with people. And, um, you know, and, and for sure, uh, the most challenging uh, psychological issues with children are who are even adopted is this idea of neglect even when they were very, very young. Um, it's a very, very real thing. And not only having strong relationships, but a strong connected relationship. So there are two aspects of that relationship, a great sense of purpose and, and, and so on and so forth. Today, I want to look at Romans chapter 12. We'll take a brief look at it. Romans chapter 12, while we're going there. By the way, we're very excited um, that uh, Owen is our newest campus intern and uh, will be leading our devotional actually on Wednesday. He's just learning about that now, but he's all fired up. About, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, uh, but uh, we're really, really excited about that. And, and uh, really good news. We were approved for some internship here in the in the Ottawa Church by the government, and so we're working out the details on that. We're um, I'm talking paid internship that the government's going to help us to pay. So uh, we're very very excited about that, and and uh, and talking about the campus ministry. So it's very 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 cool. Romans chapter twelve. So one of the things is. 
that's really important is it's the way that we view ourselves. And, and, and these, are, these are studies that are done that is really, really important. Now, one of the things that I unequivocally hate, and I use that word purposefully, you probably haven't heard me talk about hate that much, is this idea of the health and wealth gospel this word of faith movement, okay, that is an absolute distortion of what the scripture actually teaches. Where people see Christianity as a way to getting healthy, wealthy, the idea of this, if you are a good Christian, you'll never get, you'll never get sick, if, and, and, and uh, you apply biblical principles in your life and you're gonna get rich. And, and, and so on and so forth. It's, um, it's an American gospel that has spread all across the world and it's, it's the chief export of the United States. And uh, it is now propagated into cultures all across the world <clears throat> is this idea of health and wealth gospel. I'm not talking about this idea of the way that we think about ourselves so that we feel good about ourselves. That's not why Jesus came, it's so that we can, the gospel is not about feeling good about ourselves. That ultimately, that, that we get that aspect of Jesus, that, man, it's so great, I feel good about myself. Um, and I'll have some of that. Um, the idea of Christianity is that we are lost and we're sinners and that we have the person in the form of Jesus who came and um, met the consequence of the fact that we're sinners, was substituted for us. He went on the cross and he died for our sins so that we can now be a new person because of him. There's nothing to boast about. And he comes and he gives us a life that is fantastic. But how we define how fantastic it is, is pretty interesting. For Stephen, that meant being stoned to death. For Peter, that meant being hung on a cross upside down. For Paul, it meant to be beheaded. This idea is not about for us to necessarily think like that, but the idea is that we have a good sense of ourselves. And so Romans 12 helps us to understand that, to have a good picture. And so Romans chapter 12, it says this in verse one. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so Paul writes and he says, in, in, in light of the fact that what God has done for us through his mercy, through his grace, and through our faith in, in, in what Christ has done and our response to what he has done, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So the Bible says, in view of the fact that we have now been, um, we have now received God's grace and God's mercy, we ought to conduct ourselves in a, in a way. A way that includes transforming of our mind. Well, what do we transform our minds about? And this is where a lot of people then use very, very bad hermeneutics and talk about a health and wealth gospel. 
But and that's one of the dangers. I've talked to the church about this before. That's one of the dangers about reading the scriptures and then jumping from scripture to scripture to support a point that we're trying to make, as opposed to really teach the Bible. And then the Bible is able to be applied to our lives, but we need to pre teach it properly. So let's see what Paul's talking about in verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. And he goes on to talk about the fact that we've all received certain gifts. So we continue, and, and when we have those gifts, to be able to use it. And so view yourself in, prop, in a proper way. And then he says, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keeping your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another, do not be proud, but be willing to be associated with people of low position, do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul writes, and, and one of the things, of course, is remarkable context, is uh, Paul was writing to the church in Rome. As you know, Rome wasn't kind to the disciples. They were being made sport of simply because of what they believed simply because of their profession and this new Jewish rabbi. And they started to say, you want to follow this Jewish rabbi? We'll, we'll kill you like we kill him. And they say the roads to Rome was paved with crucified people because it was a warning to the masses that don't you try anything against the government. And Paul writes and he says, now because of Christ Men, uh, effect in your life, you think differently. You're, you, you don't conform to the patterns of this world. So you think about yourself in a proper way, with sober judgment. Don't think too highly, don't think too lowly. Human beings, we have a tendency, we all do. There are certain times I feel so great about myself. Sometimes I don't feel so great about myself. But the Bible says when you make an evaluation of yourself, and that's what this morning is about, is actually having a good sense of self. And the fact that I think sometimes when you think of ourselves as this, this, that Jesus is this way to a good life, that there's so, such pressure that when we don't live up to that, it actually causes more undue stress. That I'm not doing what I need to be. Wait a minute, I'm supposed to be really happy all the time. This is what I think. If this way is a way to a prosperity, a life of prosperity, and yet when we understand who we are and what we have done and that we have are sinners and that instead Christ now has gone in our stead and therefore we don't take on an estimation about who or 
who we are, but we are through God's grace and his mercy, he has been substituted for me. It's now on Christ, literally and figuratively. And so the idea has transformed people through being a new creation. When Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, he wrote with the same kind of mentality. He says, since you are now a new creation, we don't view things the way we used to view things. Primarily, he was talking about the way we view Christ. Because we are now a new creation. One of the things about the gospel, it teaches the fact that what we don't need is not a new life. It's not a, 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 a pros, prosperous life. It's a resurrected life because we are dead spiritually. We need a resurrection. That's what the gospel is. That Christ died for our sins. That we was buried and he was raised on the third day. And that we have the same mindset in the way we look towards the world, towards ourselves, through this new prism that we now have as being Christians, we think properly about ourselves. And so the idea here, Paul writes it, he says, we don't act like the world does. We don't. We don't wish evil upon people who have done evil. Now, in the context of what the Romans were doing to the Christians, that's some strong language. That is some strong language. Oh, we mourn with those who mourn. That's what he says. And to take matters into our own hands, he says, that's not, that's not what the transformed mind does. That doesn't mean that we look at spe specifically what's, what's going on in the world And it's remarkable, not good, but bad. But to think of ourselves, that we are redeemed people. We have now been adopted into the family of God, not on any basis of our merits. So the idea this morning is to think of yourself with a proper judgment. That we have a good sense of who we are and whose we are. Who we are? We are sinners in need of help badly. Whose we are is the one who has redeemed that self and resurrected that self into a new creation that has been adopted into his family that we are called his own. That we are remarkably loved by the one who matters. And so the idea is not only having a good sense of purpose, is not only being connected to one another, and not being only having strong relationships, but the idea of having a proper view of ourselves, and therefore we act properly. And so, in combination with these things, and you know, these are the general practices of good mental health, as they say, but it's not anything that's a, revel that's a revelation per se, if we practice what the scripture teaches, about following Jesus Christ. I mean, it is absolutely so, so well constructed. And I, I am telling you, one of the things that is happening to me <clears throat> is this, the more challenges come about, the longer I live this life, the more I am having my eyes open into the incredible God 
that we serve and the wisdom found in his word. Embraced fully, we're able to chart a course, not arrogantly, but humbly to be able to not only cope, but even thrive in this world. And not to be imprisoned by its fear of the coronavirus, not to be taken over with vengeance and hatred by the injustices that's going on in the world, nor should I be blind to the oppression that has gone on. And how we're able, because we have a proper view of ourselves, a good sense of ourselves, a good view of ourselves, we're now able to navigate. Oh, not without stumbling. And sure, we might stumble occasionally. But ultimately, we're able to think properly, to act properly, to feel the right way. And so this morning, let's think of ourselves as transformed people, as new creation, that we are having proper judgment about ourselves. We are, do ourselves a great disservice. And we'll talk about this maybe another time. But one of the things that, that gets into my craw, not many things do. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. But when there are charlatans out there who, under the name of Christ, preach a gospel that is not found in the scriptures, and they think godliness is a way to financial gain. And there are millions and millions of people who buy into this nonsense. And unfortunately, some of us fall prey to it. Because they think the gospel is that I go to church and I feel good and it entertained me and I think that's cool. And I am surprised how many people don't actually understand the gospel. And I feel a burden to really teach. And maybe that's the next topic we'll talk about after this week. Talk truly what the gospel is. And so we understand clearly, unequivocally, what the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in other words, we think properly. And so think of yourselves with a sober judgment this morning. Oops, it's 8.32, I went by. Uh, I, I got caught up in the spirit, sorry about that. Uh, that's not what these mornings are for, but sometimes that happens. Amen. Uh, but let's think this morning as we navigate with a good sense of purpose, Great relationships, really being connected, and then having a good sense of self, a proper judgment. Not thinking of ourselves too lowly, not thinking of ourselves highly, thinking our lives through the lens of Jesus Christ and who we are and whose we are. Amen? <laughs>